Hello, I'm Rachel and Gome, and I wanted to talk about my journey with slipping rib syndrome today. Okay, I want to try to keep this brief. I feel like this could easily be an hour long, but I want you got things to do. So let's keep it short, sweet to the point um, as much as I can. So I first had rib pain, rib symptoms when I was playing volleyball in college. I was 19. Um, I was playing for the University of Illinois never heard of slipping rib syndrome. I was torn, told it was torn rib cartilage. So what were my symptoms back then? Sorry, the shirt's kind of wrinkly, uh, rib pain, but not just like in one localized spot. It was just like radiating my entire rib cage and into my abdomen. Um, so it was kind of all over my abdomen. I had my trainer. He was kind of like working on my abdomen and like all over. Um, and I always just felt like like there needed to be space or like, just, it was, it was nerve pain. Now I know that I didn't know at the time I was like, this hurts. Um, this rib would kind of like click and, um, it got worse and it got worse. And eventually like they tried to have me take time off. Um, I took three months off before the next season and, uh, didn't heal. So I got medically released from the team. I started, um, my first round of prolotherapy injections after that, it was awful. It was painful. And I was like, never doing that again. I did. Um, so that was back in 2007, let's say 2007. So it's been a minute. It's been a minute. So I kind of continued to live my life. I could no longer do abdominal strengthening exercises, like crunches, that kind of thing, but I could still work out. So I could do like hiking and biking and lifting weights and rollerblading and all that kind of stuff. So I try to stay as active as I could. Um, and meanwhile, over the course of the next 15 years, um, always feeling like things were off. Like my hips always felt off. All the doctors always told me my hips were off. So they would give me like a heel left, a heel lift for my left foot. Um, they would try to give me like hip wedges. So funny now that I'm post-op, my hips feel level because <laughs> the rib was off that caused the hips to be off. Um, uh, so, I mean, I saw massage therapists, chiropractors, um, osteopaths, orthopedic doctors that sent me to physical therapy. Um, then I started getting PRP injections and I was just kind of like, all right, live in life. Then 2017, I was doing a hardcore work. I was doing insanity and I was doing this kind of jumping crazy workout, having on video and the upper ribs up here dislocated when we were living in France. Um, so I saw the osteopath, they popped him back in, but then it was like, they just kept popping out, popping back in, popping out, popping back in. Um, and I'd have to like go to the osteopath or the chiropractor, but it wouldn't last. And it was just felt so painful. Um, so then I started getting PRP prolotherapy injections into the entire spine, basically all the rib heads and everything. Um, so thousands of dollars spent doing that over many, many treatments that was in Fort Myers. So quite a long drive. Um, and this entire time feeling <laughs> no one could tell me like what was wrong. And I was just getting increasingly frustrated because there was never like a diagnosis of this is what's wrong with you. It was like, huh, this is weird. You're an odd case. Um, let's try this. Let's try this. And no one could be like, this is what it is. Um, I've gotten CT scans and basically all the things. Um, I was riding my bike when it felt like my right back rib was like falling down and it was really painful. This was like 2021. Um, and I'm like, I have to figure this out. Like I've seen all these doctors, no one's helping me and it's getting worse now. Like this is really starting to affect my quality of life. So I started just doing research on the internet, rib pain, rib pain, rib pain, <laughs> watching all the videos. And that's when I found slipping rib syndrome. And I was like, I think this is what it is. So what were my symptoms? It didn't, it never felt localized. It was like, it's this one rib right here. It felt very much so typical. It was always on my right side where it was the most painful that it felt like just radiating around. So the pain would go up into my armpit. It would go around my shoulder blade. It would go up into my scapula and my, my shoulder blades were always really winged out where the next therapist I saw, she was like, like, you're going to poke me in the eye with your scapula, but it was like, they couldn't go back. Um, 
so I found my own diagnosis, uh, you know, 16 years later, slipping rib syndrome. And with that, I found Dr. Hansen in West Virginia. So it was kind of like his name, slipping rib syndrome went hand in hand. And that's when I made an appointment to see him going from Orlando to West Virginia. Um, and it was wild. Like when I saw him, he literally just touched my rib. I never had a doctor actually touch my rib and be like, this is what's wrong with you. It was like, they looked at the CT scan. They're like, nothing's wrong. I don't know. Let's go to therapy. He touched my rib. So you have your 10th rib is, is slipped. Your 11th rib has been broken. Um, and it was like, something's up with your 12th. I forgot what he said, but it was like, just like crying. I was just crying tears of relief of like, oh my gosh, he actually knows what's wrong with me. He says he can help me. Um, that was just like an incredible, incredible moment. Um, so then I had surgery scheduled and in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want surgery. Like, can I, fi can I fix this on my own without surgery? So there's a slipping rib syndrome, Facebook group. Um, you can join that by the way, but someone in the group mentioned this kind of therapy that they did Sterling structural therapy. I don't want to speak badly about them. However, I'll share my own personal experience of what happened. Um, they're very nice. And I think if you have a structural issue caused by fascia, they can help you. If you have slipping rib syndrome, I think you need to get it surgically repaired. So as I started doing this therapy, it made the left side feel like it completely collapsed. And so this was January of this year where it was just like, I was active. I was good. I was like, I'm in pain, but I can deal with it. January of this year, at, like right after I saw Dr. Hansen, I was basically on the couch. I was like, this hurts. I can't do anything. Um, so for pretty much all of 2022, I spent it on the couch and it was a hard year a really hard year, basically just counting down the time until surgery of like, I can't sit, I can't do this. I can only lay on the couch, be reclined, like sitting up for an extended period of time would just cause so much pain that it wouldn't even be worth it. So it's like, what's the point of going out and doing anything? I'll just sit on the couch. Um, I wanted to pursue pain management, but at the same time, I'm like, I have kids, I have to work. I can't, you know, like be on pain management. Um, so I just took CBD and kind of Tylenol when I needed it and tried to do things that didn't piss it all off and <laughs> sucked it up. Um, I did start doing long-term fasting. And at this point, like with 2022 is when I noticed I started to lose weight just because it felt like I was like anything that can cause inflammation, I have to get rid of it. Um, and so it was like no more alcohol, no more nothing. And there were just times where it hurt too much to eat. So I was like, so I just wouldn't eat. Um, so let's go to surgery. Um, obviously doing the fascia therapy did not help. And, uh, left me quite worse off. So I was scheduled to have surgery with Dr. Hansen, August 24th. And I was like, oh my gosh, my left side is bad now. Like, is he going to do surgery on the right or the left? And as he saw me, he goes, your left side should fix itself. I, it doesn't look like anything has slipped on the left side. It looks like if we fix the right side, the left side will work itself out. And I'm like, doctor, just do what you got to do. I trust you. <laughs> and that's all. I, I'm like, I trust you. You just do your thing. Um, out of all the surgeons in the world, I'm like, this is the dude that I actually trust. I don't, everyone else is kind of trained by him. And I'm so happy I did see him because he gave the post-op report to my mom. And he was like, this was not textbook. I had to think outside the box. Her ribs were super wonky. So basically what he had to do was what's now like his 3.0 surgery, I guess, of, um, so he had to take about two centimeters, two and a half centimeters off of rib 10. I think about a centimeter and a half off of 11 and a centimeter or centimeter and a half off of 12. And so he had to trim back the cartilage on all of those. Then he, and he said like all of those were hitting the nerves, which was causing all of the pain that was happening. Um, and then he took that and used it as a spacer between rib 10 and nine, I believe. I've had people ask me for details on this. I'm like, I think that's what he did. I have it written down somewhere. Um, and so he created that cartilage grafting. Okay. So I am 
um, six and a half, six weeks post-op, six and a half weeks post-op. Um, and I have had, uh, it's been a roller coaster so far, which I have been told that's what to expect in terms of recovery. I'll tell you so far, I am doing much better than I was pre-op. And I feel like I see a light at the end of the tunnel of what life could be like, which is really exciting. Um, so I am walking like t- up to 12,000 steps a day. Like I'm much more active. Um, I'm actually back to my standing desk. I see the couch now and I'm like, I don't want anything to do with the couch. Like I'm only going to the couch if I have to go to the couch. Um, there are times when this is common where like, I feel really good. So I'm like, Oh, I want to do all the things. And then I'm like, I overdid it. Uh, I did too much. So things that I'm noticing, I had hip pain. So remember all the doctors are like, it's your hips, it's your hips, your hips are off. And so by fixing the ribs, my hips actually feel level because they always felt like everything felt off. Like my entire body just felt off. And now I'm like, when I lay down, my hips feel flat. I'm like, oh, when I stand up, I'm standing flat and I'm not like tilting all the way to the side. Um, I have a picture of myself. I was like just tilted always to the left because I had to because of the ribs on the right. And just like all the compensation from what that caused. Um, so I'm no longer like the leaning tower of Pisa. And I feel like I have structure now. Um, so the hip pain is gone. Gone. That's like, I have had hip pain for so long where it just felt like I constantly needed to stretch out my right hip. Always. It felt like my psoas was like pulling and I would always be just like hit, like digging in with the fascia blaster, trying to like get rid of it. That's gone. Um, which is pretty crazy. So now what I'm noticing is like just posture of like, I need to manage my posture of how much I was leaning forward and over like this to compensate for here. So now I'm just focused on like opening up here, trying to get things even the left side was so compensated from the right ribs being slipped. And so I feel like they're still kind of compensated. So I still get pain on the left side, which is so interesting. Um, I am confident that that is going to go away and I'm going to be healed. Um, The interesting thing is that I'm seeing is like the PTSD from this is real. So I had to get an MRI of me laying on my stomach last week and I haven't laid on my stomach in like a year, right? Like, and so I was terrified. I had to be there sitting um, with my arms overhead on this hard table for over an hour and I was like shaking. Oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. See, <laughs> like uncontrollably. So yeah, the emotions of this are real. Like it is hard, really hard, especially to just like kind of lose your independence and lose like the activity and everything. But what I have learned (laughs) through all of it is like, you really have to be your own advocate. And uh, as bad as it sounds, like don't trust all the doctors because a lot of like, I've seen chiropractors that made things a lot worse. I would not go to a chiropractor again. Don't go to a chiropractor. I've seen like the fascia therapist that made things a lot worse. And so like going back, I tried all these things to make it better, but it only made it worse. So like if I were to go back over the past 16 years, how long has it been? Uh, It's been a long, 19 years, a long journey. I'd be like, now, thank God there's Dr. Hansen, who is wonderful. Be like, go directly to him. Um, It was a long wait for surgery, but it was worth the wait. Um, Post-op. I would say get support because you're not going to be able to do much on your own. Um, My parents were here and my husband helping with kids and everything. You can't lift more than 10 pounds. Um, One of the things I didn't drive for the first couple of weeks, but then we got a rear camera in the car, so I didn't have to twist around. So that's been really helpful. Um, What else? (laughs) Get support and then just have faith that it will get better and give your body rest and let it recover and do its thing. I'm like, I want to do all the things. Let's go. But I'm like, don't push it. Don't push it. Um, so yeah, 
what I would do, join the Slipping Rib Symptom Facebook group, get support. If you know somebody with chronic pain, my God, like it is invisible. You can't see it because especially with this, like you're not on crutches, you're not in a wheelchair, but my God, is it painful? Yeah. Um, give yourself grace for sure. And um, I'm, I'm an open book. So if you have any questions or anything that you need, I am here. Um, you can reach out to me or ask me anything. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I missed. Ooh, the shoulder blades. They're actually starting to find their home again. They still feel like it still feels like this area. It's not right, but it, I feel like it'll be there. So like, I can like, I can, what do you call it? I can like actually get them to move now, which before they couldn't move at all. Um, so I'm getting that. Oh, I can't think of the word. It's gone. It's fine. Um, engage. I'm getting the shoulder blades engaged. Um, and just trying to do super light movement, not overdoing it, anything like that. Um, but you can see like, it used to be like this and now I'm like, Oh, it's even it's where it's supposed to be. Oh, I'll show you my scar too, while we're at it. So I got this nice scar. You can see it's healing quite nicely. That was actually one of the best things. Um, there were no like having to change bandages. It was just tape, um, that came off on its own from the surgery. Um, <laughs> pain meds. I took the pain meds for like two days and then I was off of them. Um, have stuff to do post-surgery. We watched scandal. <laughs> we got an Airbnb in West Virginia where we could get up and go like light walking around. So that was really nice. Um, I'm going to end this video and say good luck to you and um, get help. And I'm here if you need anything. Bye.